Don't judge the guy. Exactly. He might be on a 50k salary and you might be on a 200k salary. But the problem is this guy might be happy. Exactly. He yeah. might be enjoy he might enjoy it, bro. He takes pride in cleaning that warehouse. Mm. You know what I mean? And and who are you to sit there and judge him and say, oh bro, this guy should be fucking set. This guy should have 10 yeah. houses under his fucking belt. 100%. This guy should have this much money. This guy should have Bro, we attribute money with success. Yeah, we're, we're when, so selfish we're, with we're, that. We're, with but our where's the opinions. borderline? Where's the line between money, success, happiness? And I think to myself, what a wonderful world. G'day, guys. Welcome back to the best podcast in the area. All right. I know it's That's the best right. podcast in the area for a fact. For a fact, for an actual fact. For a fact? But the problem is, can you define what the area is? I was actually thinking about this in the shower the other day, bro. What, what else do you think about in the shower? I'm sitting in the shower and I'm like, the area, the area. But no one actually says what area. Like, people on. can argue and say, Bankstown's the area. People can argue and say, Liverpool's the area. People can say, Chester Hill's the area. What's the area? But hang on. What? A wise man once said, what did he say? A wise man called Bo Ryan once said, Bo Ryan. I'm from the area, Bankstown, Bankstown Punchbowl, Punch La, La Kemba. Kemba. From January, January to December. December. Look at my Oosh forever. Oh my God. Remember that? Remember, remember <laughs> the footy show? Do you remember the footy show, bro? Fucking hell. They ruined the footy show when they yeah, let yeah. that Erin Mole, whatever her name is, the Mole. Bro, Aaron Mole, you fucking ruined half my childhood. Now, I haven't forgiven literally, you. Literally, she actually I have not childhood. forgiven you for that. Erin Mole, look, <laughs> footy show, you'd go Thursday night, you'd watch the footy, you, the footy would finish at like 9 p.m. and then you'd sit there and watch the footy show bro, for you another two you hours. You wouldn't give a fuck about the footy. You just no, you just want to see the footy show. You, you want to see, see Fatty Vorden and Bo, Ry <laughs> Bo Nose. Bro, do you know we actually saw Bo Ryan once? We actually met him. Me, me and my mate Taha. Shout out Taha. You, I know you're watching this. When, when we're actually studying once in Bankstown, Bankstown Library, yeah. we, get it, we, we, we walk outside and who the fuck do we see? We see Bo Ryan. And he's sitting there and doing Bo Nose and he done a segment with us but you know what burnt me the most? He never put us on the footy show. <laughs> I can't remember what he goes. He goes, hey boys, you guys drive any fully sick cars? Like blah 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 and this and that. And we're like, yeah, bro, car goes. <laughs> bro, then, there was a kid at school once that was on one of his uh oh, segments, yeah, yeah, yeah. And the kid, bro, he he made sure the whole school knew about knew it. And about everyone the, was like, fuck, was that's the, footy, the guy that's on the, the footy, footy show. show. <laughs> but the footy show was a big deal, bro. The footy show was a big deal. But then they ruined it and like literally you'd ha you'd watch the footy show at 9 p.m right, I'm finishes up. at 11 p.m i'm pulling up this is classic bro ryan bro you, you until pull this fucking bitch ruined it yeah fucking Aaron mullen sorry for this ring Aaron <laughs> but yeah yeah you'd watch the footy show till 11 p.m and you honestly you'd have school the next morning bro i'd wake up to school groggy half asleep and i'd be like it was worth it bro it was worth it to watch the footy show and they always have that kick for cash 40 yeah. meters out i always wondered can you kick a goal from 40 meters out and get that thousand dollars bro i reckon it was it was doable I, I've, I've, I think I've kicked about a third. Right, he done so many conversion. bonos. Like look, oh, I'm he just done showing heaps. them right now. He done so many. He done like area, Guildford. Bro. He look done. He done Newcastle, Bankstown. Fucking Wentworthville. Wentworthville, Penrith. Coaches. He done. He literally went over here. But then go back to my question. What's the area? What? All right, Bo Ryan defined that as Bankstown, Punchbowl, Lakemba. But then people would January from Liverpool, December. from Liverpool would come and say, no, nah. Liverpool is a fucking area. No, but look, you got Chester Hill, you got Greenacre, you got Bass Hill, you, you got, got all these areas, bro. Is that ca shouldn't it be called the areas? Or no, 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 that would sound shit. That sounds it wouldn't sound the same if you call it the areas. It it's got to be the right. area. Anyway, guys, welcome back. Look, as you can tell, it's just me and him today. We got no guests because no one likes us anymore. Apparently, we <laughs> no one wants to be on the podcast. No, I'm joking. Look, we did have a guest lined up. But stuff happens, shit pops up, uh, last minute, couldn't make it. So we're like, you know what? We've, we thought about it. We're like, do we not do a podcast or we just sit here and fuck around? We thought we'd sit here and just me and him as the OGs, like the first two episodes, sit down, talk about yeah. fucking absolute shit. For well, we, we started. Whatever we started, it is. Like just we me, started you, it we like that. So we thought big guess, we so. may as well just have a kick back today, talk about whatever the fuck comes up. And just you know, go go ahead for the podcast. But what I want to start with, what I want to start with, I sound like an import. What I want to start today, with, Junior. Fucking stuttering <laughs> prick. Yeah, anyway, stuttering prick. Yeah. Anyway, so I wanted to start with the big plans we have. Let's talk about the plans for the levy. All right. Mm. Should I give them away? A bit of our plans, like some secrets. Oh, you're I gonna think give away that one. one. Yeah, I, 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 one. I'm gonna say it. Look, I'm just gonna say it. Fuck it. Ooh. We got a we got a big plan for the levy, right? We we want to release. Like a lot of people did this, but I feel like we want to release some merch. All right, we want to we want to make shirts, maybe a few hoodies, maybe sh uh, uh, hats, um, 
J strings, nah, I'm joking. Nah, nah, oh, no, 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 not yet, not yet. <laughs> but we want to release a few um, shirts, and uh, we have a few ideas. And look, they're probably very simple ideas. It's not going to be something crazy, but I feel like the the new fashion world and merch. Look, I know fuck all about fashion. All right, I don't know anything about fashion. Fuck do I know as well? I all I do is I'll get designer brands, wear them, and I feel like that's another topic, bro. Why do why do Lebos? I've actually wanted to always say this on the podcast. Why do Lebos always wear Nike, Adidas? And all these like different brands, like athletic brands, and the bloke smokes a dick of Rothman Blues a day and can't even run 50 meters <laughs> nah, before wears, getting puffed out and having bloke, an asthma attack. And he wears Nike and freaking and and, and uh, Under Armour and and shoes and and Asics and yeah. fuck, bro. The bloke's bro, gonna bloke run. Will wear fucking every fucking tennis kit, every fucking whatever. Why do kit? we do that? Why do we wear <laughs> sports uh, freaking brands and 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 all this like athletic active wear and we can't even run 50 meters, bro? Wallah, we smoke argili all day and we do all this well, shit. we can run. We can run. With, uh, yeah, all right. We're not talking <laughs> about that running. We're talking about another run. You fucking like that one, didn't you? <laughs> we're talking about a different one, but but the, that that's what always burns me. Like, why are we so into those, like, athletic brands? Since when did Nike become a thing for uh, Lebos, for example? Because we Adidas can. Adidas as well. Because we can. Has that always been around? Yeah, Look, if can, you're from the older good. generation, if you're from the older generation, comment below if Nike and Adidas was around back in the 80s or 70s or 50s or 40s. Nah. I, I don't think anyone from the 50s and 60s you know is what? watching the Levy podcast. Let but me I, search up. I want to search up right now. I think, I think, nah, you look. No, what do you mean? Nike, no, Nike and Adidas has always been around. But what I'm, what I'm trying to say is, well, did Lebo's always wear that stuff? Like, oh no, actually they wore Everlast and Lonsdale. Remember Lonsdale? Yeah. That was the bro, cheapest gonna, shit, bro. I'm gonna like, search up Lebos in the '90s, see if it comes up. What, what, bro? Did they have fades? Did Lebos have skin fades in the '90s? What was it like in the '90s? Nah, I, I reckon they just had like the the bold haircut or Lebos, something like that. Lebos. Anyway, guys, back to the merch. So we want to release some yeah. some shirts and some merch, and nothing too expensive. You know, we're we're just looking at different suppliers at the moment. We're looking at different brands, different um, different like style, different material. And we want to get the best, all right? We want to make it something comfortable because mm. for me, I care a lot about comfortability. I know a lot is brand, but a lot about shirts is comfortability. Yeah. Um, hoodies as well. Well, we got we got basically the winter. We're getting into the winter now. Yeah. We want to release hoodies. We want to release a, a lot of hoodies, different colors. And um, I don't want I don't want it to be something cringy because I know a lot of, look, I'm not going to mention anyone, but I know a lot of people have released merch, but some of it, you look at it and you're like, bro, I don't want to wear this out. I'm not going to yeah. wear this out. It's a bit cringy. Like some people would put like so many like i don't know it's it's too crowded with their yeah, face and all yeah. this like am i gonna wear someone else's face like i don't know i, I don't know if i personally would do it but i wouldn't do it but but the, the thing is a, a lot of people as well make it too like too i don't know how to say it like too influencer sort of thing like yeah it's not uh, subtle it's got to be it's got to be subtle like what subtly. i th what i like is i like shirts that are just Basically, most of my shirts, except this one, for some reason I'm wearing this one today, but most of my shirts that would have like a subtle, like just a bit of writing here or like a symbol or something and the whole shirt would be plain, like a plain black shirt with like a, yeah, I, I like a little... Yeah, I like those kind of shirts. And like that's, that's, that what I like. I think, that's what I think our merch would be. And guys, look, I always say this and I know I'm not some man haki as they say in Lebanese, but we don't get paid for any of this. None of this. Like literally, we do this for fun. We both have full-time jobs. We're sitting here and, and, and we do this, you know, after work at night. And um, yeah, like the the least like may, maybe a bit of appreciation would be if you guys can buy our merch. And I'm not gonna sit here and beg you, like uh, please buy our merch, please buy our merch. But it would fucking help. Like it, it would help a little bit. You know what I mean? Like we yeah. wouldn't. It wouldn't be a crazy price. We wouldn't want to profit so much off you guys. But you know, comment below. Like I'm actually interested to know how many of you guys would actually buy our merch. I know you don't have any idea of what it's gonna look like yet, and and we haven't released anything yet. But I'm thinking in the next week or so, we're going to release a few concepts. Might post them on my Instagram. So if you're not following me on Instagram, follow me on Instagram. Um, and pro we've linked the Instagram oh, in the bio. Yeah. And you uh, right. make a few shout outs while you're at it. Follow the Lebby podcast. I'll, put, I'll drop it down below um, on Instagram. We're new to Instagram. And if we've been on TikTok. I'll drop that as well. But our TikTok's going well. But our, our new, we have a new TikTok account. We're going to post the clips. So if you can't be fucked watching this podcast... You can watch the clip on the go on Instagram. So That's yeah. right. We're releasing some clips and stuff like that. And yeah, like follow me on Instagram and I might release a few concepts of the shirts. Follow me on Instagram. Follow me on Instagram. <laughs> the only OGs know who that is. But yeah, we're going to release a few like uh, designer concepts of the shirts. And, you, and yeah, I want to get you guys' opinion. I, I'm going to actually put polls and stuff and say, is this better? Is this nicer? Is this nicer? Get you guys' opinion So, because you guys are going to be the ones that are buying it. Not me, bro. I'm, I'm going to be it's my own merch. I might even wear it for the fucking... For the hell of it, might even wear it for two months straight. 
everywhere, <laughs> including my own house. Is that is that weird if you wear your own your own? No, merch? why the fuck wouldn't you wear it's your own? So weird, eh? Nah, well, you wear your own merch to obviously uh, promote it. No, 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 no. I'm on the podcast, obviously, but I'm saying if you're just going out. Yeah. Oh, bro. Abracababra. Abracababra is an example. We had him on the podcast. I'm a few not saying weeks it's weird. I, I just don't Even know. Shaq. I, Shaq I as well. We had know. Shaq on last week. They both wore their merch when yeah. they came past. And I, I think it's a good thing to wear your merch because yeah. it's like, it's uh, it's a way to show like people that this is my merch. This is who I am. Promote yourself. Please buy my merch. But you know, like shit nah, like for that. For sure, for sure. But I've never had the experience of having my own merch. That's how, well, I, don't, that's how brother, I don't know. Brother, look, you release <laughs> nice shirts and it's not going to be Givenchy or Louis Vuitton. Listen, people have roasted me for saying Givenchy, Juvanchi, but it's actually Givenchy. Is it Givenchy? I don't even know, it's bro. Givenchy. Well, I don't know. No, I have no fucking. But anyway, idea. so that's it, guys. That's one of our plans. We're not going to give away too much, but that's, that's one of our plans. That's it for the podcast, guys. <laughs> uh, that's it. Yellow. Let's wrap it up. <laughs> nah, I'm joking. Nah, fuck it, bro. I know it's only me and him, but we're going to give you a bit of a long one today. Yeah, it's going to be right. a good one. Let's talk about the long weekend. All right. Uh, for me, look, what I did was I did a smart this long weekend. Usually Easter, what I do is I have Friday off and Monday off, get back to work. But what I thought about this time, I'm like, why not make it a long week instead of a long weekend? So what I did was I took the Tuesday, Wednesday, which is today. We're filming this on Wednesday. We actually filmed this on Wednesday, upload on Thursday. But what I did was took the Tuesday, Wednesday and Thursday off, come back Friday. Why mm -hmm. I did that? You ask. Well, you didn't even ask, but why did I do that? Why did you do that, good sir? Why did I do that, good <laughs> sir? So what I did was I thought... I'm going on a little trip. We're going on a little holiday. We'll go into the entrance. So I thought we're going to the entrance on, uh, was it Saturday, Sunday? Uh, sorry, wait, was it Sunday, Monday? We went Sunday, Monday Sunday, and Monday. back to work on Tuesday. So I thought, no, I'm not fucking doing that. Because what you do is you prolong the depression, like actually not the prolonged dep depression, but you delay the depression. So what happens is you come back from, from holidays and you're like, oh shit, I got another three days off. Mm -hmm. And that's what happened with me. I came back, we came back on Monday. I'm like, yeah. beautiful. I got Tuesday, Wednesday and Thursday off. And I'm like, think ahead, brother. We play chess here. We don't play, we don't play checkers. We play chess. So what I did was I took Tuesday, Wednesday and Thursday off. So when I come back, I have another holiday after the holiday. Yeah. So that, that way you play it smart. So you like, you know, you're not, you're not you back and you're groggy and you go back to work the next day and you're like, fuck me. That went so quick. But why is it so weird that when you, when you come back to work straight after a holiday, you just feel fucking weird. I don't know what you it just, is. You just, it doesn't, life doesn't feel yeah. right. It doesn't and you feel just the same. you reminisce. You're like, it's yeah. kind of sad. I don't know why it you is. just reminisce. You do because you're like, <laughs> you're at work on Tuesday and you're like, fuck, 12 o'clock yesterday. Oh, sorry. Midday yesterday, I was by the pool. Yeah, yeah. Now you, I'm fucking look at in the front time of my computer. And what exactly were you, you, were you were doing? You were doing the, the day before. before. And that, that's what would have <laughs> happened to me. But lucky today, I was like, oh, it's midday. I'm in bed. And yesterday, I was by the pool. So it's like, you But know, for Lebos, it'll be... Yesterday I was drinking shisha because that's all the fuck we do. Because that's on all holidays. we do. Wallah, we go, we drive three <laughs> hours, bro. We drive three hours 100%. to just sit down and drink argili, which is what we do when we're in the area as well. <laughs> why, bro? It's just argili with a view. It's argili with a view. It's that's not all like it I don't do it as well. I have argili, but I do some stuff. Yeah, like. but it's like argili with a view. That's but you have to have argili. You, you got to have argili. Just you have. But to. anyway, we went to the entrance, right? Anyone that's from Sydney, well, I think we got listeners from Melbourne. We might, we might have mis listeners from Melbourne, from Queensland. Fuck, man. But no I'm way. actually curious to know. Fuck, I'm curious to know everything, bro. I'm curious. Right, com today. Comment below if you're not from Sydney. <laughs> <laughs> bro, we're going to get so much comments. Look, comment if you're not from Sydney. But anyway, if you're from Sydney, um, actually, if you're not from Sydney, the entrance is basically Brighton and the Sands, which is, bright, which is, which is basically uh, a place, a beach where Lebos go, drink shisha, um, drive their AMGs down Bay Street, pumping Tiger, do a few burnouts and expect girls to go, oh my God, did you see that burnout? Oh my God. What do they expect, bro? But in reality, Wallah, when like they drive their AMGs down the road and I'm sitting there have, trying to have my dessert at desserts, sitting there having my waffle. Desserts? I'm like, brother, Sratni, bro. <laughs> Sratni, bro. This is, like, this is literally what happens. You just look. It's fuck like, it. it's fuck like an idiot. Your, 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 your <laughs> mid-conversation, you're like, yeah, bro, work was... <laughs> no, what is it? And then he's both... Boom. Everyone just looks and then there's and always like, that one guy... Shut the just, fuck up. Fucking idiot. <laughs> yeah, fucking loser. Remember that ad that they do I this? Remember that ad when they do this when the, when the guy, with the guy's oh, speeding? Oh, yeah, they don't remind me Yeah, but like, bro. anyway, the entrance is like Brian and the Sands on steroids, bro. The entrance has so many Arabs, so many heads, bro. You walk down... You know that part near the, where the water, where the, where, yeah, everyone knows it. The main strip where literally yeah, yeah, all near the water. The, the, there's a little water park for kids and there's like a playground the and then there's like a few playground. restaurants. Yeah. Not going to mention who they are, but there's a few restaurants. And, and, and yeah, usually in that area, it's like packed with Arabs, bro. Literally, you walk down 
We actually went there a few months ago as well during Australia Day. And we went there and, bro, last time, it was fucking crazy, bro. Every, every fucking two meters, this, like, guy looks at us. Oi, TikTok. Hey, oh, TikTok. Yeah, was, that was bad. Oi, TikTok. Fuck me. A few guys took a photo with us, man. That was probably the first time someone took a photo of me. I'm like, oh, wow. You know, like, I- inside, I was like, that's me? Really? You want How to take did a photo that feel? I actually felt weird. Having some random bloke take a photo with you. I actually felt weird. And he, I hope he's watching the podcast, bro. Look, it was the first time that, that guy... You that, were the first guy to take a photo with me. You were the first guy that took a photo with me. Um, you remember and, his and, name, you dickhead? <laughs> You're a dickhead. I think I do. But I'm not oh, going to say it. I'm not going to say it. That's, that's Look, bad. That was the um, first fan, bro. So that, that guy actually took a photo with me. No, because what happened was we're at a restaurant and then we walked in. And as we're walking in, this, this kid, he, he was a young kid. And he stops me and he's like, he's like, excuse me, are you the guy from TikTok? Are you... And I'm like, yeah, yeah, bro. And he's like, bro, I love your videos. They're so funny. I'm like, thanks, man. And, and usually I, I buckle a bit, but I was all right. I was like, yeah, thanks, bro. Went inside, ordered the meals. And then as I'm walking outside, this kid was still standing there. And, I'm, and he stops me and he's like, bro, do you mind if I take a photo with you? And then I think I paused for about five seconds because in my head, I was like, what the fuck? Like, like really? Like me? Like, what, what do you mean? Take a photo. With? Like, and then... I just, I just said, yeah, no worries. And then took the photo. And then as I walk it out, there was like a few Aussies, like old Aussies and like mm. their kids and stuff, like a family, white family sitting there. And as I'm walking out and sit back at my, at my table, I look and I see that them, I see them looking at him and telling him, who's that guy? Who the fuck is that? Like, you know, they, because they're always curious. They're like, right, who you the know hell that, is that? You know that he was showing them your TikToks as well? He was. And I saw that he was, because I saw my profile on his phone. Because they're like, who's that? And then he's like, oh, it's this TikToker and stuff. And they're probably in their heads are like, oh, okay, fuck. No, right. they're like 50-year-old, at least 60s. They old look 50. at least 60. And they're watching your Libos and Aussie skits. And I'm mm. like, what the fuck's going on? Yeah, they're probably <laughs> like, bro, who the fuck is this kid, bro? Who makes TikToks, <laughs> TikToks and shit? But yeah, it felt weird. It was like, it was like, oh, all right. And then it happened another time, I think at Bankstown, there was another kid that saw us, me and you actually. And he's like, bro, can I talk a photo with your pal? I'm like, yeah, bro, don't worry. He took a... Took a proper bro, selfie with us. I was kids, like, oh, wow, well, you know, pretty Kids good. took a photo with me. And I'm, yeah. I'm fucking, kids took a photo I'm with this guy. Brother. I'm like, I'm just an average guy. I'm his brother. You're Mahmoud's brother. I'm no, like, Jackie, like, you should change your name to Mahmoud's brother. I'm like, oh, you, we see you on the skits before. Can, can we take a photo? Yeah. And but anyway, like, the, yeah, that was... Yeah, continue what we saying. Yeah. What, what I was saying was the entrance this time was completely dead. I'm telling you, there was no heads, bro. We were walking and literally there was no one. Brother. There was a few Aussies and that was it. We, we, were, we were able to go on a bike ride. You know on that strip where it's all... We Argi- went on a bike ride. Argilis and stuff. And for some reason, <laughs> yeah, we went on a bike ride. There was no Argilis lined up. There was nothing lined up. And we're just re- literally on our bikes near the water going for a bike ride. And I'm telling you, bro, did you feel the same thing about that bike? It, I feel like it was going to fall apart. Yeah. The was bike like, was probably like we 30 years old, bro. Bikes. It was like we hired those yellow bikes that you just pay and then you remove it and then you bring it back for an hour. Bro, I felt like the bike was going to break down. Yeah. Bro, I, pu- I jumped on the bike and I'm riding this bike and I'm like, ee, 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 and it's making Bro, it a lot of sounds. on it. It had gears. What the fuck do I know about? I don't even drive manual. I didn't know there's manual in fucking bikes. <laughs> and I'm manual like, bikes. I see a gear. It says one, two. I don't, I don't, I don't get the I don't get the I, I just either. left it online and just... Well, I don't, I don't understand normal. the gears. But the thing is, with those bikes, I felt like they were going to break down, bro. Like the, the weight of myself, I'm not that fat, but the yeah. weight of me on that bike... Felt like the bike was going to just <laughs> flop, you know, like just break yeah, into a, a million fucking... pieces. And I'm riding this bike and as I'm riding this bike, it's like, bang, you know, like, bro, I was so scared riding that bike. Honestly, I was like, it's going to break. But it didn't. It somehow didn't. And the, the noises it was making was so much noises. Yeah, it was so much noise. But yeah, anyway, that, that, that trip was, was interesting because like usually you're used to lebos and, and loudness and stuff, but it was very quiet. Okay. And I think it had to do with the fact that we were coming back. Um, we went there on like a Monday or the Sunday, Monday, and a lot of people were coming back from public holiday. So it was like, you know, fuck it. Not much people fishing. Not much people not fishing. Much people no, fishing. no, not a lot For of some people reason. Fishing. I don't know. Why, we did fishing. And guys, look, me with fishing, I don't like fishing. And I know there's a lot of people mm. that probably like fishing that watch this podcast. But guys, I just don't have the patience for it, bro. <laughs> I feel like it's so daunting. I, I had the patience before the you shoot. You retired. He's retired. I'm, I'm Officially ret- resigned. I my hands up. Hands up. Uh, retired. How shit is it? <laughs> When your young sister, your young sister is fishing and you're fishing, she gets four fish. Four. Look at this. Four. No, 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 no. First she gets off, four fish and this guy gets nothing. Bro. First off, she, nothing. Got, she got two, all right? Sec- bro, she sec- got about two or three. Don't lie. She got about two. And there were silver brins or about this small. And we were standing Doesn't there matter. for about, at least, we were fishing for about fucking three, four hours at least. Three, four and hours. And I'm sitting there watching them. And I'm like, any fish yet? Any luck, mate? Any luck, mate? As usual. But 
There was nothing. There was no fish. Yeah. I, I, we were fishing in like a place where it's all seaweed. Like I was just catching seaweed. I was no catching. Bro, no the bass. entrance is probably the worst place for fishing. Oh, no, there's a lot of lebos saying, brother, I've no, caught the fucking zooey there, bro. I've caught a fucking zooey cup. No, you got to go. You, the only time I'll go fishing from now on is on the boat. Because like. Yeah, I've been on the boat. On the and I've got to tell you, the only time I've ever caught a fish is on a boat. And I was a massive zooey. And I'm not even lying. I'm not talking lebo now. I'm talking fishermen. <laughs> nah, yeah, on the on the boat is the prob- probably the best. The best on the boat there. is fucking crazy, like, cause yeah. on the boat you just get bites, crazy, like, bang, bang, bang. When I'm on the when I'm on the like the wharf or whatever you call it, the jetty, it's like there's no bites, bro. And I get excited. I'm the type that if I get a little bit of a freaking wave, I'm like, oh shit, I got something. Reel it in. It's fucking seaweed or it's someone's boot. <laughs> I actually caught a hat or something once. I'm not what even joking. Well, like, I caught a hat or a or a shoe. It was a hat. I think it was a hat. But yeah, it was something weird. That's. Funny. I thought that only happens in the movies. But anyway, the million dollar question. <laughs> Is Moses going to do a hair review? <laughs> oh, fuck. Because someone, look, someone commented on our last Let video. Let me find this guy. Let me find What's this guy. What's his name? Bro. Give him a shout out. The guy commented on our last podcast. I think it was on the Shaq podcast. And Listen, he's, like, I, I don't, he's like, why does Moses always wear a hat? And I'm, I'm fucking, I've noticed it now. Every single podcast, this guy's wearing a hat. Listen, bro, I, the guy that asked this, I don't hate you. But I hate you. No, I'm joking. No, no. I don't no, hate you, but I fucking hate you. <laughs> no, but no, yeah, but like... The, the, I've noticed, you're bro... You're curious, you're curious. You're so curious, bro. Not? Is he bald? Does he have a mohawk? Does he have blue hair? Let's see Does he boy. have blonde hair? Let's see Does he boy. have no hair? Where is I don't he? know. Where is he? Where is he? You, you guys got to find out. And um, I feel like we need to do a hair reveal, Muse. I honestly feel like this podcast is has come to the time where we've got to do a hair reveal. What do you reckon? All right, let me find this guy. Let me find this guy. I just want to. I just want right, to find this comment. Jackson find Williams. Jackson Williams. Shout out, Jackson Williams. Jackson bro. Williams says the uh, real question. I feel here. like I feel like that's a fake account, by the way. Who the <laughs> fuck calls himself Jackson Williams? No, but I, this it is, sounds fake. This is what he commented. He's like, the real question here is why does Moses always wear a hat? Mm. Can we do a Moses hair reveal? Um, I, I saw that. I'm like, bro, look, I think we should give the people what they want. The, the guy got a few likes on his comment as well, didn't he? Mm. How many? He got six likes. He got six thumbs up. Uh, I mean, like, that's seven people already that want to see Moses' hair. They want to see Moses do a hair reveal. Oh, shit. Are we doing it? Are we fucking doing it? Look. Ah, oh, he takes off the headphones. He takes off the headphones. He's ready to do it. Guys, what do you reckon? Come on. I've got to get right. All right. Give us a hair reveal. Come on. You guys are going to get about probably three, two or three seconds of, of my hair reveal. All right. Let's see his hair, bro. Oh, because his hair is fucking atrocious. Mm. Look at this. Look at this. Look at this. Give him a hair reveal. Uh, it doesn't even do it justice. I feel like the camera doesn't that's even do it justice. Nah, come on, bro. That wasn't even good. That's not even good enough to clickbait. Right, nah, nah, nah. I've, look. Right, well, look, look. Watch this. Watch this. This is my hair, guys. Okay? Oh, it's too dark. Uh, all right. There, 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 there. Perfect, perfect. There. Right. See that? Oh, it doesn't even do it that, ju- that much justice. Right, do, but the, anyway, guys, for look. The clickbait, for the clickbait. This is my hair, guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll probably see it better, but guys, laugh. if you see it in real life, <laughs> if you see it in real life, it's even it's even worse than it is on that, camera. That was a good couple minutes, bro. It was yeah, all right. Yeah, it was all right. You gave him a bit of a hair reveal. You are happy? You happy, the Jackson? Way, but what are you gonna do about your hair? That's the that's the real question. Guys, by the way, he's younger than me, so I don't know how the fuck he's losing his hair. Well, thanks, I, thanks I, to um, dad. I never wore a hat. Thanks to my dads and uh, my uncles for their lovely jeans. The lovely jeans. And, and you know what the funny thing is? We're brothers, right? I feel like people have established the fact that we're brothers. But the, the thing is, this guy got his hair jeans literally straight from my dad and my uncles. Because my dad's not that bad, by the way. He's still got a bit of hair. But my uncles, man. I, my uncles, on the other hand. What, Shout out them? my uncles. Uh, Shout out my uncles. Two of them? <laughs> honestly, bold. Fully bald, completely bald. And I think one of them lost their hair by the time he was my age, which is I'm 23 now. And he was 23 and had no hair whatsoever. Thankfully for me, I took mum's jeans. Because <laughs> mum's dad, my, my judo from my mum's side, apparently he had hair for a while. Yeah. My uncle, my mum's brother, still has some hair. Mm. I wouldn't mind by 45, but 50. your boy here has lost his hair. And no, you, what are you, 20? You're 20 years old. You're 20 years old and you, you've years lost old. your hair. I'm 20 years old. Thanks for announcing that, by the way. No, but people want to know. <laughs> people want to see the hair. They want to they want to know the hair. But what are you going to do? Are you going to go to Turkey? I, I, I look for, I'm looking for any reason to go it, to Turkey. It's not what I want to do. It's what I need to do. All right? Yeah, yeah, basically and it is. Uh, it's it's because I fucking need it. No, I'm joking. You fucking need it. <laughs> That's what you do. You need I need to go to Turkey. That's the solution, all right? Well, whether you, you like it or, or not. <laughs> whether you like it or not. Bro, I just want to have that pomegranate drink once more from Turkey, bro. That pomegranate oh, drink. Yeah, fuck. You're walking, you're walking, you're fucking tired. You just want to get something to drink. 
and every 10 meters there's a stall of a guy literally all he does is you know that machine the presser he's got oh, that pomegranate man. chucks it on the presser no, but he it. does another type as well what's the other one comes so fresh I think he does orange as well that pomegranate juice i'm telling you guys it is one of the best pomegranate juice i've ever had in my life and i'm telling you i've had pomegranate juice everywhere all right i've had pomegranate juice in the area not the same <laughs> not the same i've had sugarcane pomegranate it's, it's good but it's not the same that one it's just very fresh and it's very cold as well yeah it's, it's very it fresh, hits the spot because when you're on holidays you walk a lot it's and you need crazy. refreshments and it hits the fucking spot that's for sure i want to go a bit deep all right how deep <laughs> that's what she said no i'm joking balls I'm, deep. Joking. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm joking fucking <laughs> balls deep oof oof <laughs> relax bro we're con trying to keep it pg we're trying to get monetized here oh, but anyway <clears throat> kids shouldn't be watching now anyway so. what a kids it's past your bedtime by the way because we might upload this late warning this conversation is not for <laughs> kids <laughs> warning this conversation is not for kids please tell them to go to sleep or fuck off <laughs> imagine that and then they, nah, nah, it's not that bad we're just talking nah, about like it, it, it's not look uh, I wanted to talk about this last week, mm. but uh, we had Shaq, so I, I wanted to focus more on the guest and obviously bring out more of Shaq. But it's it's got to do with me having that flat tire, right? And mm. during that flat tire, it's not it's not anything to do with the flat tire in general. What it is is as I was sitting in that car, right, and I had that forty minutes before the NRMA came and actually took my car to a safe place. So I was in the middle of City, City Westlink, which is a very busy road. Mm. I'm sitting there in my car, and what I noticed, I just looked at everyone as I'm sitting in my car, and I'm like. It's just a sheep system, bro. It's like mm. a system. It's it's a it's a it's an autonomous system that people are living in. All right. So what's happening is I'm sitting in this car and I'm just paying attention to people's faces, people's mm. expressions, and as I'm looking at their faces, they're driving past me. Everyone is just so like focused on just one thing, getting to work, and getting to work on time and on time. And obviously, there's nothing wrong with that, but it's just that people are just very programmed these days. I just. Mm. Uh, uh, it's and you know what it's very cliche talk but yeah but yeah. i feel like that's that's a thing like because i was sitting there and i'm like no one even stopped mind you to even say like are you okay because looking at looking at my wheel it looked like it was a car accident from from the look of the photo mm. but no one actually stopped to actually say are you okay or is anything wrong people were just like very okay. concerned <laughs> more concerned with like me blocking their way on getting to work and, and, and I saw a lot of root fingers. I obviously copped a lot of fucking, fuck you, get the fuck off. Fuck yeah. you, man. <laughs> and, and I'm sitting there and I'm thinking, bro, we're such sheep yeah. for the fact that no one's like, it's 8 a.m., mind you, it's, it's peak time. And people are just like... But, but to be fair... They just look like robots, listen, bro. Listen, I'm listen. telling you, they look like robots. To be fair, I'm driving to work. I don't want to fix some random Lebo's car. I got a note. I got a road on the way. Notes. What on, is it? On the way. I don't want to fix some random Lebo's car on, on the way. No, no, it's not about fixing <laughs> a Lebo's car. It's, it's at a least... Tire, at least stopping because it did stop you could stop and ask no, you know, no. you and, and i'm not telling them to stop the thing is th th there was traffic at times there was traffic where the car stopped mm. and there was literally someone like driving right next to me stopped stopped literally stopped stationary looking at me and didn't even ask didn't even pull the window down and say are you okay are you okay <laughs> I, I obviously i obviously was he just looking at you like that <laughs> i obviously looked like i was a bit of, I, I was in a bit of uh distress but a bit of a pickle honestly it was like i, I, I I don't know, man. It, it was crazy. It was crazy. It was like mm. it was like the f and I wanted to talk about this topic, right? I feel like this day and age, there's a lot of people that are just programmed to sort of just drive to work, sit there for eight hours, um, on a computer, do your task, come back, and earn for whatever you know, twelve hundred a week, whatever, whatever you earn. And there's nothing wrong with that. But what I, what I feel like, I feel like no one's actually working on what they actually love. Mm. There's a lot of people out there, and which is sad that that they do a job right, that they they're working in a career that they don't really enjoy. They don't enjoy that career, yeah. and you're telling me these people don't have any hobbies or passions or anything else that they want to do besides 100 that career. They do uh, whatever it is. Let's say let's say uh, let me give an example. Let's say you're an accountant. Let's say you're not enjoying your job as an accountant. You're sitting there working with numbers all day, and and and, and the, the whole idea of a, of a of a degree, right? Let's talk about a degree. Um, I, I I done my degree in mechanical engineering and and I, and I feel like that's a pivotal point of my life because I I, I never done um, mechanical engineering sitting there and saying oh you know what I want to be a mechanical engineer and I want to do it for the rest of my life work nine to five make someone else make someone else rich and just die hmm. it wasn't my plan it wasn't always my plan There's more to, to become a that, mechanical engineer obviously. and die but obviously the uni degree that that I did was was like a um, 
it's a sense of security. What it is, is a degree, is a sense of financial security. Um, obviously, uh, with, with, a, with a price, with a debt, with a unique debt. And um, i done that degree. So what I did was I felt like the degree was a pivotal point of my life because it was like a, a backdrop. Hmm. It wasn't like, I'm not sitting here and saying, I don't want to be a mechanical engineer or I don't enjoy my job or, or this and that. But I feel like working, I, I've only been working for two years full time and I feel like driving to work, it becomes like Groundhog Day. You've watched that movie Groundhog Day and, 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 it, and it does become like a very repetitive system. And when you're sitting there and thinking, I'm working for someone and I'm, I'm, I'm sitting here and I'm, it just, it just becomes like a, like a cycle. Like day in, day out, going to that job, it's, it's hard. It's tough work, all right? Mm. But for me, my, my options were very limited, all right? They, they, they weren't actually limited, but what I, getting into uni was not hard, all right? Like you study your ass off in your HSC, you get that mark, you, you, you get a lot of help from your, from your peers, from your, from, your, from your teachers. There's a lot of spoon feeding in, in high school, in year 12 especially. And, and what happened was I, I, I sat there and I'm like picking my preferences and I'm like, all right, uh, what can I do? I'm like, I'm good at maths. I'm good at physics. I may as well do something that um, relates to that. And um, so I chose mechanical engineering because I spoke to a lot of engineers and they told me, look, mechanical engineering is, uh, there's a lot of jobs. It's uh, very broad. You can uh, specialize in a lot of different things. So I sat there and I'm like, okay, I'll do mechanical engineering. And I, and I, and I, and I, and I had to get a high, a high mark. It wasn't like a high, high ATAR, but I had to get a high ATAR to get into the uni that I wanted to. And alhamdulillah, it worked out. I've done that. But what happened was I got into that first year, right? And I'm sitting there and I'm sitting at uni. I, I, I rock up to uni. I, I get there and I'm like, the environment just didn't feel like right. Mm. It just didn't feel like it was a great environment. Even though uni is like one of the best days, but... There's a lot of snakes. There's a lot of backbiting. There's a lot of um, there's a lot of people using you for certain things, and, and 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 that's what I feel like. Uni was a lot about me, 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 me. Fuck off, fuck off, fuck off. Like a, a lot of people like give me this, and and uh, and and you can't trust anyone. And that's the thing. I grew up with a close knit community in my school, and a lot of good friends and stuff like that. And then as soon as I got to uni, it was different. Yeah. It was like I sat there in my first year, and I was like. There's not, not a lot of spoon feeding, so it's very hard. And, and it's just like, you sit there in a lecture for two hours, sit, sit there listening to someone talk about fucking, sometimes you don't even know what the hell they're talking about. Sometimes you don't even understand what they're talking about. And they're sitting there and they're you get to know the person next to you, bro. This guy could be someone from Newtown that, that looks, no, look, look, I've got nothing against people from Newtown, but it could be, it could be someone that, like, that looks just weird and, and they, they don't vibe with you. And you, you're just forced to talk to them and you're forced mm. to get into the groups with these people. And you're like, it was a different environment with me because a, a lot of school for me was like Lebos, um, surrounded by Arabs, surrounded by people of the same you know culture, religion, whatever. When you get to uni, it's like so many different people. It's like people that you've never sort of communicated with before. And my lack You're of communication was hard. End, it was, yeah, you get thrown yeah. in the deep end. And for me, the lack of communication there was hard. So I was sitting there trying to meet new people and I'm like, this guy Darren from fucking the Shire or whatever, I didn't, I didn't know what to talk to him about. I'm like... Mm. Well, do you watch the footy? And he's like, no. Sometimes they don't watch the footy. Sometimes they don't watch the UFC. Sometimes they don't. Darren from the Shire doesn't watch the footy. Well, it wasn't Darren from the Shire. <laughs> Let's say it was like uh, Rajesh from Parramatta. Whatever. Yeah. Like it was <laughs> some guy. Some guy, right? They don't yeah, watch that, the footy. That's more they don't, they, don't, they don't watch UFC. They don't, they don't, just, they don't link with you. And, I, and there was a lot of these mm. nerds, bro. I wasn't a nerd. I was a smart student. I, yeah. I was book smart. Like I, I, I study a lot. I, I, I worked hard. I studied hard. But I wasn't like a nerd. I wasn't like the type of guy that, even though they're very smart, they even outside of work, they talk about ner nerdy shit. Like, yeah. for example, Star Wars. I'd never watched Star Wars. The first guy I saw at uni uh, in my, cl I never my first class, yeah. I looked at him. We're having a conversation. I'm like, uh, so what do you do for fun? He's like, he's just like, I play Minecraft. And he was like, he's like one of them full geeks. And I'm like, I was never a gamer as well. Well, exactly. good for Why? you. That's I, I, have, I, have, I hardly play Minecraft, but it was probably a good game. But I yeah. can't relate to you because you can't I can't relate. That's I the hard thing. It. Like it was a lot about relatability yeah. and relatability. I can't relate to hard. you because you don't. And that was one of the struggling points in uni. A lot of it was hard to make friends because these people are like, they're different, bro. They're, like the way they act is different. Like I, I'm not, I'm not saying I, I didn't get along with nerds, but it's just geeky shit that the stuff that they were into. Yeah. And my uni was known for that. There was a lot of two different kinds. But you right? know, you know what it is. It's how is a lebo from the how do you expect a lebo from the area but the, th the thing is i, I that, am that, I, I am a lebo from the yeah. area but I, look I, I play a role right i'm not i'm not that moe guy that i always act like i'm not i'm not like that i don't, I don't talk like well oh, this no, no, but give me a snap 
in in your but it's still hard yeah at, yeah like it's still hard to to sort of link on their level because all I knew was like Lebos. All I knew was that's going what I'm up saying, That's what I'm trying to say. You're yeah. in an environment, you grow up in an environment where you're not... It's a bubble. Yeah, you don't... It's basically like it's a, a bubble. bubble. Yeah. You don't talk to much people outside that bubble. That's what it is. And that's what it is. And I was stuck in that yeah. bubble. And once you get out of that bubble, it's like you're getting out of your comfort zone. Mm. So anyway, long story short, midway through that first year, I'm like, this is getting hard. Like, this is getting really hard. And I, and I did struggle with uni because I thought... You, you, it's hard to sort of go out there on your own, meet these new people, um, understand these lecturers. Just you know, like you, getting used to school was so easy because there was a lot of help. There was a lot of like um, you know people looking out for you and stuff like that. But then when you get to uni, you're on your own. You're completely on your own. And I'm not trying to scare anyone that's watching this podcast that wants to get into uni and do a uni degree. But you got to work hard. Uni, you got to work hard. Look, I'm just going to tell you the reality. HC is hard. Uni is three times as hard as HC because uni is very independent, very independent. So uh, midway through this first year, I'm like, it's very hard. Like I'm struggling. I'm like, fuck, I don't know if it's worth it. I actually started thinking, I don't know if it's worth it. So what did I do? I spoke to dad and dad's like, um, you know what? Why don't you go, go during, it was like a uni break. I had like a month off and he's like, he's like, why don't you just go do some labor job? Like, do form work basically for your uni break earn a bit of money mm. and because uni everyone's broke so there was a there was a good i'll just stop niggering stop noodles is the guy <laughs> niggering noodles and and everyone knows during uni you're broke like unless you're a drug dealer on the side you're fucking broke there was a lot of there was a guy that told me when i got to work um not long ago he's like it's funny because in uni you have a lot of time but no money but when you're working you have a lot of money but no time and that makes so so much sense true it makes so much sense so yeah anyway i, I i'm i'm i yeah, for that month off, I'm sitting there and, I, and, and I'm like, okay, I'll go do this form work. I'll go become a tradie for a bit, make some money and then go back to uni for the second semester. Even though I was fucking hating uni, I'm like, I don't know, man. I don't know if I can... It was hard. It was hard. So anyway, I go, I'm excited. I'm like, all right, beautiful. I'm going to do this form work. I'm going to get into construction. I'm going to do the hard yakka because I saw a lot of tradies and I'm like, fuck, bro, tradies get the ladies, this and that. A lot of it was actually wearing the tradie shirt. I really wanted to wear that tradie shirt. Yeah. I'm like, bro, it just looks hectic. You know what I mean? You wear a hat, you wear the tradie shirt, you drive, you're like, fuck, bro, I feel like I'm old. You know, I feel like I'm a, yeah. I'm, like, I'm an adult. I'm a rajel. You know what I mean? <laughs> you just you feel like you're a rajel, which is like a, like a, like you're a male. You're not a rajel until alpha. you get in a tradie shirt. You're an alpha. You know what I mean? <laughs> So I'm like, beautiful. I went to Kmart. I bought these fucking tradie shirts. I bought the long sleeve. I bought the short sleeve. I bought a jumper. I bought all this stuff. I bought this hat. I, bought I was so excited to get to this form work job. Anyway, comes around the, the night before. The guy's like, sends me a message. 7 a.m. Parramatta site. Beautiful. I'm like, fucking hectic. I'm working at Parramatta. Not too far. Mind you, this was during the... This, this was during summer. For su No, no. Actually, yeah. Wait, I got my story wrong. It was actually the, after the first year of uni, not, not the first semester. So this was during the summer break. This was during the summer break. So what happened was it was summer, all right? And, I, and, and mind you, the first day of work was actually 38 degrees Celsius. Do you know how hot that is? That is hot. fucking hot. hot. That, is, that, is one of, that is one of the hottest days you can imagine. Mm. And it's one of the hottest days in Sydney. So what I did was um, I got ready. I put my steel cap boots. Um, I put my shirt. I put everything. I'm like, yes, that's it. I'm becoming a tradie. Boom. I'm like hectic, you know, I'm, I'm excited. Fucking put my alarm for 6 a.m. so I can get to site early. Get, I, I, I even had a tool belt. I had everything. I was like, I was like, I'm set. That's it. You know, I, I rock up to site the next morning, 6:30 a.m. I'm on site. Mm -hmm. Call up the guy. He's like, Yeah, yeah, come. You got pre-start. Beautiful pre-start is like a little talk that they have before you Hectic actually start. Pre -start. Hectic pre-start. I walk on. Pre-start. Fucking guy, bro. I'm telling you, the guy he was like a foreman or something. The way he was talking to us tradies. Oh, I called myself a tradie, but it was like my first day on the job. The way this guy was talking to you, it was like he was looking down on you. The way he was like, yeah, look, I don't want any fucking incidents, all right? You know, fucking safety. Oi, where the, where the fuck's your white card? Like, the way they're talking, bro, that's it was every, so... <laughs> every form is like... He that, was very, yeah. very like... I don't know if it was... I don't know if that's just the way he talks. I don't know if he was being disrespectful. I don't know what it is. But the way he was talking, he was just like very looked down upon. And I'm like, oh, okay, why is he talking? Well, what, what, what's up his ass? But apparently it's just how he talks. Anyway, so I have my supervisor. I walk on site. He's like, eh, it was a, he was in Iraq. I'm going to say he was, he was in Iraq. And he, he, he tells me, ah, follow me, follow me. And he was an import, so he couldn't really talk good English. He's like, follow me. And I'm walking on this fucking, down this trench, you know, uh, down this hill. And he was like fucking deep. It was deep, bro. It was like so unsafe. And it was like, mm. I feel like I was going to fall. And it was like my first day. 
And he's like, okay, what I want you to do? He gave me this hammer, bro. I don't know why he fucking gave me this. He gave me this hammer and he's like, I want you to like dig a trench, like a little trench here, which is like a little, like about 10 meters, bro. And he wanted me to do it with a hammer. Mm. I'm sitting there and I'm thinking, how the hammer? fuck is it possible? He wants me to dig with a hammer, bro. I don't fucking, I don't know if he was playing a joke on me, but he told me to dig with a hammer. Dig with a hammer. Like the apprentice, he played a joke on him. So I'm sitting there and I'm digging and I'm digging and I'm digging. And I'm telling you, bro, it was somehow, it was 7.30 a.m. and it was already 38 degrees. I don't know how it was that hot. It's always like... Bro, the guy... Hot, yeah, it's just... The, oh, it was so hot. And, and I'm sitting there and I'm digging and I'm dying, bro. I went... I'm like, bro, I can't do this anymore. Half an hour in, bro. I'm telling you, half an hour in, I'm like, I can't do this anymore. Mm. I walked I walked to the site sheds, to the toilet. I called I called, I called, called the, the boss, the guy that got me the job. I'm like, can I go home? He's like, what do you mean? You've only been there for half an hour. I'm like, literally, I, I'm dying. I cannot go home. Can I have a half day? He's like, brother, it's not a half day if you work half an hour. I'm yeah. like, I'm like, oh, bro, I can't do this. And then I, he goes, just do it. Shut the phone, called my dad. He's like, you got to finish that day. He goes, you go there for that first day. You're not fucking coming back home until you finish that day. And I want you to finish that day. I'm like, all right, I'll finish that day. I'm telling you that day went was one of the longest days of fucking my life. I'm telling you, it was one of the long, longest days. I, I went and I'd done that day and I'm sitting there and I'm just, I got angry, bro. I'm, I got angry like, because I was sitting there at like 1 p.m., 2 p.m. towards the end of the day, sweating like a fucking dog, sitting there and just so tired, so like exhausted. And this guy comes on site, bro. He's an engineer. He comes on site. He's holding a clipboard, wearing a vest, in a business shirt, not even a sweat on him. Came from his air-conditioned Hilux. Walks on site for about five minutes, writes a few shit on his checkboard, on his, on his, on his, on his, on his checklist or whatever, speaks to the foreman, fucks off with a coffee in his hand. Hmm. I'm sitting there, I'm like, oh, I've got to finish my uni degree. I'm like, I'm like, I want to be that guy. <laughs> I want to be that guy. I want to do what that guy's doing. Yeah. And look, I'm not, I'm not sitting here and I'm not going to shit on tradies. I'm not going to sit here and bro, say... Tradies look, like get a lot of money if you... If bro, you, if you bro, remember. tradies, I'm telling you. Look, all right, let's talk uni degree versus tradies. Uni degree, the reason why I completed my uni degree and the reason why I went back to uni and done all that is because I'm not, I'm not hands-on. Mm. I'm not a guy. I can't take physical labor. I can't do physical labor. And I'm, I'm putting my hand up and I'm admitting it. I, I've done, At least I'm admitting it. Yeah, I've done... I feel like I've, I'm more, I've done more physical labor than you. You have, you have. I've, and you're I've probably worked, more... I've worked in warehouses and I've worked in containers. Containers is one of the most physically straining, probably the most physically straining do job I've done by far. Yeah. You're holding, for example, fucking 20 plus kilo bags for, for uh, 8 to 12 hours. 100%. And, straight. And, and, and that's what it is, bro. There's no... There's, Loading and unloading. There's no shame in being a tradie because look... I, I had the option. I could have I could have dropped out of uni and said, that's it, I'm doing form work for the rest of my life. Mm. But I sat there and I'm like, I can't take the physical labor. Like, I, I'm not good with my hands. I can't do physical labor. I'm not fit out for that. I'm more fit out for a fucking office job sitting in the air condition and walking out on site. Yeah. Bro, mind you, tradies, bro, I'm telling you, they earn probably 10 times as much as fucking engineers. People finish their degrees and sometimes tradies can kill it. Tradies, there's no, there's no shame in being a tradie and there's no shame in doing a uni degree. There's a lot of people that say, oh, brother, you know, uni degree is a waste of time. A uni degree is not a waste of time because a uni degree gives you that safe option and plus it gives you that sort of like, if you're not hands-on, you can sort of relax, do your job. It's a lot of mental stress. Physical stress is different. Physical stress is for a tradie and if you can take that and make the money at the same time, fucking kudos to you, bro. Go do it. Go mm. do it. Do your thing. I hate this Arab mentality how it's like, no, you have to get a uni degree. You have to get an office job. That's wrong. If someone's good with their hands, if someone uh, has the physical ability and has that sort of mindset, that's what school doesn't train you. School doesn't train you to be, to um, sort of blend to what you want to do. You know what's bullshit? You know what I mean? The fact that you, we have such a small amount of time, such a small amount of time when we're kids to decide what we want to do. Because put it this way, from kindergarten to year six, you could you'd want to be a fucking astronaut or whatever. That's you, right. That's you don't right. know what the fuck you want to be. Like, you could be a fucking, be in the army, but you I, don't know. I wanted to be like a freaking fire brigade, I think, yeah, when I was in primary school. It's not really your realistic dream when you're young. You When you're, f let's say from kindergarten to about year 10, you kind of know what you want to do, but you don't know how you're going to get there and you don't you know don't why know you exactly want to do what you wanted to do. Yeah, but exactly. year 11 and 12 is where you start thinking, and it's only fucking two years. It's only two years it. if you think about it. It's not enough time. Yeah. It's, it, it's, it's such a short amount of time. And I feel like 
that that's the problem. They don't give you that option to explore what you want to do. They mm. sit there and they feed you books of knowledge the same way that they feed everyone else a book of knowledge. And they know that each and every single student has a different mindset and has a different way of learning. Some students have a way of learning through photos. Some students have a way of learning through books. Some students have a way of learning through their hands, through practicals. And that's what it is, bro. Tradies earn a lot of money. Engineers yeah. earn a lot of money. People with uni degrees earn a lot of money. But that's the thing. What are you good at? What do you do that's And it's good not for only you? what you're good at. It's, it's what you enjoy. Enjoy and that, what you're good at. That's for example, right. let's that's right. say Habib. For example, Habib. Yeah. Champion wrestler, champion uh, UFC MMA fighter. Yeah. But let's say he was in school and took up fucking science or physics or whatever. And let's say he, he excelled in it. He, he, let's say he, it was his, you know, it was his bread and butter. And, that's, that's, and our teacher told him that's what you're going to do for, uh, in uni. We could have never had him as a champion, as a UFC that's champion. Right. And that's right. That's right. He probably enjoys doing and what, he loves coaching. That's what it is, bro. Yeah. Sometimes you've got to compromise to do what you love. So you can enjoy yourself because mm. what people don't tell you, people tell you, oh, do this degree and oh, you, you're going to earn big money. You're going to be this, you're going to be that. Mm. But they never tell you that you're going to wake up every single day at 6 a.m. to go to this job, work there for eight hours, come back and do that for the rest of your life. They never give you that daunting, that daunting truth, which yeah. is what is going to help you decide what you're going to do because you've got to think of it that way. I know there's a lot of people that watch this podcast that are still probably thinking what they want to do in, this, in, in their life. You've got to think about it this way. Are you willing, look at your job now. Are you willing to do that job, wake up every day at 6 a.m. for the rest of your life until you basically die and do that job or retire? Are you willing to do that? And yeah. Ask yourself that question and then reevaluate what you want to do. Yeah. Because that is the most important thing and that's what I've come to realize. It's a lot about what you enjoy. You could be... And that goes back yeah. to the sheep thing that I was talking about. There's a lot of people that go to these nine to five jobs and they sit there and they're like... You know, they, they just make someone else rich and, 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 and do, do what they want to do. So when, when I, let me go back to my story. Me using that guy and me using this tradey work as motivation to complete my degree is, is what I use because I'm like, I don't want to sit there and break my back and, and be sweaty and, and earn physical labor. And I'm not talking about money. Don't sit there and say, oh, tradies earn so much because I know they earn so much. But me, it was more about the physical demanding work. I didn't they, enjoy they it. Go for I didn't a lot, enjoy man. it. They go for a lot of physical. A hundred percent. Physical labor is so hard and I respect the tradies so much because, you know, they're the ones that built this fucking country, bro. They built yeah. this country well, with their hands. If it's without truck drivers, warehouse workers. Um, they're the ones that built this country, a hundred percent. And we sit there in our office and sit there back and say, oh, you know, we designed this shit. But are we willing to sit there and do what the tradies are doing? Are we willing to sit there and, and lay bricks? Are we willing to sit there and lay concrete? Willing to sit there and, and you know, put the formwork out? We're not willing to do that because we, we're not good with our hands. But that's the thing, bro. I use that as motivation to finish my uni degree. But there's probably people that look at me and use me as motivation to build their own empire. Because people look at me and like, this guy works nine to five, goes to his office and does his job and makes someone else rich, clocks in, clocks out. I don't want to be like that. I want to sit there and build my own empire, make myself rich, work for myself, be my own boss and not be like that guy who works nine to five. The mm -hmm. clock just works both ways. There's always people looking at other people as motivation. Just like sure. you look at other people, I look at other people, they look at us. You know what I mean? And that's what I want to get at, bro. There's, 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 there's physical labor, there's mental stress, but there's also doing what you love. And doing what you love is so important because... You know, like there's people that go and do their job, they come home, they have another passion, but they don't work on it because they're so tired from their fucking nine to five mentally draining or physically draining job. And they can't escape it because they think it's too risky. Too so risky. But that's the thing. You know what? There was a video I watched the other day that sort of helped me. And there was a guy talking about, he was one of those motivators and a lot of them are bullshit. But this guy, the thing that he said made a lot, a lot of sense. Mm. And what he said was, and, and this could go a bit deep and dark, but it's the reality of life. What he said was, in a hundred years time, all of us are going to be dead. There's no one going to be alive. In a hundred years time, everyone that's watching this podcast, me and you, anyone around us, we're all going to be dead. There's no one going to be here. So well, doesn't most, that... Unless you're, uh, unless you're zero years old or unless you live to 125 or yeah, whatever it is. Uh, yeah. Which is hardly the case these days. But th that's, that's the reality of life. There's, there's always a new trend. There's always a new generation coming. And there's a new generation coming. And there's a new generation coming. And there's always a new generation coming. And the thing is, people are going to forget us. All these people that live now and people that are watching us and people that are judging us, people that are looking at us, people that are judging other people, they're all going to be dead in a hundred years time. So why should it matter what I do or what I don't do? Do what you love because in a hundred years time, everyone's going to be dead. No one's going to be here, bro. 
I swear, that's yeah. that 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 you honestly know, you changed know my f- outlook on life. You know what I fucking hate? I hate negativity and people that will bring you down just just, based just because they can't do yeah, something. Because they can't That's uh, right. You might be you know you might be an engineer, you might be earning X amount of dollars, but you might enjoy doing fucking I don't know, bad, badminton. You can't you might enjoy fucking I don't know, swimming. Yeah, that's right. And and don't I feel like no one should ever judge anyone for what they're doing. Because yeah. even if it's fucking suing, bro, even if someone's sitting there sewing clothes, if that's what you enjoy, that's what you enjoy, bro. It's no. your life. That's the problem. We're trying to live other people's lives. Everyone's trying to live other people's lives. Don't live another person's life. Live your own life. Live your, yeah. Be yourself. And if that means fucking painting shit, you know, painting stuff, go fucking paint. Go do what you love because waking yeah. up 9 a.m. for the rest of your life is not fucking worth the 200K safe salary or the 100K safe salary when you're going to be fucking miserable, all right? That's the real, that's the truth here. And I know we got deep, we got deep, and I, I'm not a motivator myself, and I'm not nothing myself. And, you know, I'm, I'm still fucking trying to find out what I want to do. You know, I, I've, I've got my uni degree, and I'm working full-time, and alhamdulillah, I've got a stable job. But at the same time, I'm still exploring, bro. I'm, I'm what, I'm 23 now? We still have that time to fuck up. You have that time to fuck up, make mistakes, mm. learn, choose, pick up something. You know, you know, you know um, yeah, I want to tell you something. You know, you know when I was working in the warehouse... Um, I was probably about 19 or whatever. And yeah. I'm working in a warehouse. I'm doing picking, you know, scanning and just putting this on trolleys, some bullshit job. Yep. And then I'm looking at this guy, right, in the warehouse. He might, he's probably the oldest guy in the whole warehouse. Yeah. He's about probably 50, 60 years old. 50, 60 and he's doing the same. And no, no, he's not. He's he's What his job is, is, I think he's the only guy that does that. He cleans the whole warehouse well. for the whole day and I'm looking like, Bro, this guy is over 50 and doing it. Over 50, I want to be like, you know, safe, you know, stable job and like... But then I, I thought, why the fuck am I thinking this? This is another guy. Man, he might enjoy that. He might that's enjoy what it is. That's what it is. And, and that's exactly right. And I was just going to cut you off because I'm like, don't judge the guy. Exactly. He might be on a 50K salary and you might be on a 200K salary. But the problem is this guy might be happy. Exactly. He, yeah. might, be enjoy- he might enjoy it, bro. He takes pride in cleaning that warehouse. Mm. You know what I mean? And... And who are you to sit there and judge him and say, oh, bro, this guy should be fucking set. This guy should have 10 yeah. houses under his fucking belt. This guy should have this much money. This guy should have... Bro, we attribute money with success. Yeah, we're, we're when, so selfish we're, with we're, that. With but our where's the opinions. borderline? Where's the line between money, success, happiness? All right? Mm. There's that movie we watched not long ago, The Pursuit of Happiness. Mm. And... And that's a that's very a good very movie. Good if you haven't oh watched The Pursuit God. of Happiness which the best with Will of Smith, time. I watched it with the whole family watched yeah. it. It was a great movie. That it's a very it basically follows, movie. It's a very heartwarming movie. It basically follows Will Smith. You know, he was... Um, and it's based on a true story. He was basically chasing this idea of happiness, which is basically a lot of money. When, you know, the real happiness... Well, I, I'm not, I don't want to give away. I don't want to give away too much. Go watch the movie. But we need to realize that happiness comes with doesn't is not uh how do they say it directly proportional to money and if if that's what it is for you then so be it you know what i mean there's a lot of people that say i would be happy if i had this x amount of money Mm. but then there's a lot of people that say i would be happy if i clean the toilet at fucking marquee walla i'm I'm being serious you know what i mean yeah so yeah there's a it's it's selfish selfish of me to think that you know why why the fuck is this guy why is he cleaning What, what the fuck's he doing that's see, what you're being enjoys. judgmental. Yeah, that's, that's what you're what being. You're being judgmental. That's maybe what not not what I enjoy, but it's probably what he enjoys. So, and that's what it goes back to. Hundred years from now, none of us are going to be here. It's 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 sad. It's dark, but it's the truth. It's the reality. None of us are going to be here. And and if that's not enough motivation for you to do whatever the fuck you want to do and enjoy yourself, then I don't know what is because you're chasing this money. You're chasing this life when it's such a short time, bro. It's it goes by like that, bro. How many people do we see die young? You know, it just pass by. It, look, I'm not, I'm not going to sit here and be a preacher and I hardly bring religion into this, but I feel like, man, it's just spend your life doing what you love, um, you know, doing mm. the right thing, obviously not, not going off and doing stuff that's off the radar, but, but doing the right thing and obviously enjoying yourself. That's what, what more do you need to do? You know mm. what I mean? Should we make a bit of a shift? You know, yeah, you know, you know, I want to shift it to like on the topic of growing up and choosing yeah. things like that. Let's... Let's talk about about stories growing up, All childhood right. stories. Childhood up. stories. So, 
Which should I start? So, uh, you want to talk about like what? Like injuries? Let's, let's start with injuries. All right. We had a lot of injuries and we had a bit of weed injuries. I had some injuries. He had some injuries. Do you want to start? Do you want to say your I'll start. So, yeah. I was probably in maybe year four, year five, something like that. Yeah. And it's, it's afternoon after school and I'm, I'm running around with this other kid, uh, my friend. We're running around. And there's a ramp where it's like near the classroom and mm. there's like... It's called window pen. Is it called a window pen? I don't know what it is. It's it's like the 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 border of like the yeah and outline like of the glass. Sh- uh, the no, window. no, the thing that you lift up. The, the yeah, yeah, like the window. The window. How there's that yeah. cover on the window. You lift it up and it has a sharp sharp edge to it. Yeah. What, the corner of it is sharp. The and, corner um, of that window. Yeah. Is sharp. I'm running towards it on that ramp near near it, and then how the fuck were you running that close to it? I don't know. I'm were you like hugging the fucking I'm year wall? four. I'm running. This guy's tips. sitting there running and hugging the wall. I don't but you know what's the fucking br- playing tips was the best thing, honestly. It was fucking That's dangerous. What, that though. was our worries. It was dangerous though, yeah. and which leads me to yeah. So we're playing tips, me and him, um, having the time of my life, time yeah. of my life, and then bang, I, I I hit onto this corner, and I feel like a little cut, and I'm like, oh, it's probably just a little cut, and yeah, you know, I'm like, let's see what it is, and then uh, pull my shirt up a bit, I look, brother. My fucking my meat is literally. Your meat ha- is hanging out. I don't know if it's a fat of, or meat. I don't know. Not that just, meat. Not ma- that meat. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 it's no, a no, piece no. of fat. Fucking. I don't know what it is, but it's hanging out. I and, remember that. Yeah. And yeah. I was just casually. I was just like, oh, oh shit. <laughs> I was oh like, oh, shit. I'm like, uh, yeah. And my mum was the teacher. Yeah, so, yeah. Uh, yeah. By the way, yeah. Context. Our mum was the primary teacher that the school that we went to. So that's yeah. What so it I helps. just I go I go up to my mum in the office. I'm like. Mum, uh, yes, something happened. Uh, wait, wait, wait. Were you fu- weren't you fucking in pain or anything? No, I was just like... I wasn't That's in pain. That's weird. You're just a kid. Like, you don't feel it. It's weird. I wasn't in pain. I was just like, okay. Shock. And then I showed her and she's like, oh, sh- oh no. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> and then she took me. Yeah, I got like about five to six stitches maybe. And yeah. yeah. But yeah. That's crazy, man. Like, How the fuck do you hug the window <laughs> that much? I don't know, man. But yeah. But it's- if you thought that was clumsy, guys... Um, I got a fucking story for you guys. I got a bit of a clumsy story. This guy's story. worse. This guy's injuries. Bro, I'm, I was probably one of the clumsiest kids. I'm not going to say I'm not a clumsy adult. I'm fucking still a clumsy adult, but I was a clumsy, 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 clumsy kid. So one of my worst injuries, and a lot of people that are watching this that know me probably already know this injury, but take a guess. Yes, it's that one. It's the <laughs> eye. It's compass in the eye, all right? So this was like year five or year four. And I'm sitting there and uh, you guys know what what a compass is, right? A compass is like to help you draw circles. And mm. back in the days, and now I see a lot of the compasses, by the way, very blunt. very, And they probably done it because of me. <laughs> but there's, oh, very by the blunt. way, that window, they, they took off. All they the, took off the thing, yeah. Because well, of me. Fucking, there you go. Innovation, brother. Innovation. <laughs> uh, innovation, brother. You know. <laughs> but yeah, anyway, so um, they, they make a lot of the, yeah, the, the, the compasses now, they're blunt. But back in the day, the compass had very sharp fucking tips at the end. It was like the, the part that you put in to like basically hold it in place so it does the circle. It was very sharp. So I'm holding this compass and I'm like sitting there and we had tubs back in school, in primary school. Mm. So what you do is you have a desk and this, is, this desk is like basically a tub. So you open this tub and you put all your books and your pencil cases in there. Me being the smartest kid I am, fucking sit there and I'm, and I'm holding this compass and I'm like, what would happen... If I actually open this fucking tub with a compass. So you can imagine, yeah? Let me give a bit of a demonstration. Oh, what? what? You can imagine You can imagine this is the tub, all right? And I'm sitting there and I've got my compass in my hand. Got anything here? No, nothing that looks like a compass. But I've got my compass in my hand. And I'm sitting there and I'm trying, to, I'm trying to open this tub with the compass. So I'm sitting there and I'm like... I've basically dug it into this tub. And I'm sitting there and I'm like, why isn't it going up? Why isn't it going up? So I put my head down. Boom. Like that. Boom. The, uh, the compass slips off the tub, bang, hits me in the eye. Fuck. Bro, I'm sitting there and I swear to you, I swear to you, it happened in like a split second. And I didn't realize. It was so quick. It felt like, you feel like, you know, when you accidentally poke your eye, like that quick. It was so mm. quick. I take it out. You didn't feel anything? Nothing. Mm. But what happened was, I f- like, the compass was like quick. It's not like, don't think that the compass got stuck in because that'd be a fucking, be- that'd be a dilemma. All right. That'd be a big dilemma. But what happened was the compass got out straight away and I'm sitting there and I'm like, did I just poke myself in the eye with the compass? So what I did was I blinked a few times and I fucking knew I poked my eye with the compass because you know why? This was the eye that I done it in and this eye right here, completely, I swear to God, completely cloudy. Like I could bet, I reckon my vision in that eye was about 10%. It was so bad. 
Fuck. Like fucking, it was like cloudy, bro. It was so cloudy. It was like white and and very like mushy, and it's just I couldn't see shit. Mm. So what I do, I decide I'm like, oh, fuck, this is no good. So I gotta go still tell the teacher. I go up to my teacher, my year five teacher. I'm like to her, miss. I think I poked the compass in my eye. She's like, what? What do you mean you poked the compass in your eye? What do you mean? What are you talking about? I'm like, I poked the compass in my eye. She's like, what? Which eye? I'm like, this eye. She's like, well, she was very smart for this, by the way. I don't, I don't know how she came up with this on the spot. She goes, cover the left eye, which is the eye that I didn't poke the compass with the, my, my comp- my, the compass in my eye. So I covered my left eye and she's like, how many fingers am I holding? I kid you not. I think she was holding two fingers and I said six. Yep, he's fucked. <laughs> <laughs> she, goes, she goes, yep, this guy's fucked. <laughs> So yeah, she's like, he's fucked. He's like, the guy can't even see my fucking fingers. It was two fingers. And mind you, she was about three meters away. Not even. She was a meter away from me, in front of me. <laughs> so she's like, she, she tells, for some reason, she tells one of the students in the class, she's like, go tell his mum right now. Because by the way, my mum worked at the school. She was a teacher there. So <laughs> I, 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 I get, my mum comes and I'm like, she's like, sure, what happened? I'm like, yeah, I poked the... Why are we so casual when we tell mum? <laughs> it's so <laughs> casual. It's like... Yeah, mum, uh... Poked my eye Yeah mum I stabbed myself in the heart Oh yeah mum I poked my eye, my eye With the cup She's like Yee Yee <laughs> She started panicking As per usual She's always like She's always like Yee Yee I'm hospital just, I'm just hospital. Like, hospital And we're just like a dope We're just like <laughs> And I'm like Alright And then uh, Bro and I'm like I'm like alright Let's fucking go to the hospital We go to the hospital The guy fucking examines my eye With like the um This thing I don't even Looks like a microscope But for your eye Yeah And he's sitting there looking He's like now, actually, we went to the medical center first. So we went to the medical center and he's looking at my eye. He's like, take him to the hospital right fucking now. We didn't say fucking, but he's like, right now. Mum, 10 times the amount she was panicking at school. <laughs> Doctor, is he going to lose his eye? Doctor, is he going blind? Doctor, is he this? Why do Arab mums always stress like 10 times more Ready? than the situation? They you make want, it worse. You want to know something funny? That day as well, yeah. it was lunchtime and I came out. Yeah, and I, I see you all the years. I always see your year um, come out to lunch, and I'm seeing all. Yeah, the I, was, I was in you five at the time. And then so I'm like to your mate. I'm like uh, one of your close mates. I'm like, uh, where, where's where's Mahmoud? And he's like, uh, oh, he just he poked his eye with the compass. I'm like, <laughs> fuck you, mate. So bro. casual. Are you joking? Are you serious? It probably sounded like a joke. Yeah, I'm like, <laughs> are you serious? Like, yeah. well, seriously? Like, and he's like, uh, no, no, he did. He's just at the hospital, you know. I'm like. All right, fuck, fuck all right, no worries. It's just one of those moments, moments where it's like, just so fuck. weird. It's just so <laughs> just random. Walk off. Yeah, but anyway, so I go, I go, I go to the, the hospital, and then they're like, bro, this guy needs stitches. Mm. The doctor's like, he needs stitches in his eye. So I got, stitches I think it was like four eye. stitches fuck. in my eye. Literally, it was fucked. Like, bro, I went, I got, I had my operation that night. I had my operation that night, and they're like, you might wake up with a little bit of pain. So what they did was they put me the gas, right? Mm. And I'm sitting there and I'm like, I'm thinking in my head, I'm like, can I fight this? How do I, can I sleep? Like, do I have to sleep? I'm like, what if, what if I try to fight it? He's like, give it about, just count to 10. He goes, you won't even make it to 10. I'm like, all right, bet. Let's fucking do it. <laughs> he puts the laughing gas. I'm like, one, two, boom. <laughs> and knocked boom. Out. Knocked out. Ben Askren. I don't even remember. I don't even remember quicker, anything, bro. It went out quicker than Ben Askren. Bro. I went out so quick. And I woke up at about 1 a.m., 2 a.m. the next night. I swear to God, I was in the worst pain possible, bro. My eye was fucked. A little bit of pain or was it? Bro, bro, my eye, it felt like someone stabbed my eye. It's like it was a delayed reaction of the compass. It was like now I'm feeling all the pain and my dad's asleep and I'm like, oh, fuck. And I'm sitting there and I'm crying to myself and I'm like, fuck me. And I went back to sleep, woke up the next morning, had... I had the mini, you know, the little cornflakes packet. Yeah. They always give you the little cornflakes packet with the milk. Oh yeah, yeah. best fucking cornflakes <laughs> I've had in my life. The best cornflakes I've had in my life is that. But yeah, anyway, on that topic, I want to talk about Arab parent. Wait, wait, wait. there's one more story I have. Can I, can I, there's one more injury. Look, we're running out of time. Bro. There's one more injury which was really right. funny, which I want to, which I want to include. So, we're playing soccer in the backyard, me and this guy and his mate, and then the ball's coming to me, and I've done a rainbow flick uh, before. I've done it. I'm like, I'm going to do a rainbow flick. Wait, I remember this. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Yeah. And now I do, I attempt a rainbow flick, but somehow fucking f- fall over, fucking fracture my fucking wrist somehow. I don't know. Oh, but, yeah. <laughs> so I fractured, as fucked as it sounds, oh, I fuck. fractured my wrist playing soccer. How the fuck does that happen? You're meant to fracture your leg. Listen. You're meant to fracture your ankle. It gets worse. It gets worse. And then when I go to school, yeah. 
I have a cast, you know. You know when you have a cast. Oh, yeah. you're a sick cunt. Yeah, act big, I'm gonna get the, wanna get the oi, whole year to. Oi, baby, you wanna sign my cast? <laughs> that gonna, was like, babe, do you have snap back in the day, baby? I'm gonna you wanna get sign my cast? all the chicks in year seven to sign my cast. <laughs> That's what I was thinking. I'm like, and then I do get all the chicks to sign. I'm like, oh, Wait, were you in year twelve? No, it was like <laughs> fucking year six, seven. I don't. I was young. <laughs> No, I made you sound weird. I'm like, you said, I'm going to get all the chicks in year seven and you in your tour. Oh, fuck uh, no, nah. fuck that. Red Ooh. hot. And then, yeah. And then uh, when it comes to the boys in the class, I'm yeah. like, oh, God, bro, how'd you do it? I'm like, uh, I was playing soccer. I don't know why the fuck I didn't make up something. Why don't you make up a story? I don't know. You I sound like a fucking hours, bro. I, got, I was playing soccer and they're like, hang on, you fractured your wrist playing soccer. And brother, that would have that been the roast joke, of the century. That joke continued on to at least year ten or year eleven. No, oh, probably. I, like, I can imagine. I can imagine. Until this day, I regret. I'm like, I still don't know why the fuck I didn't make up a story. Because man, you could have made up a story. Who the fuck fractures their you wrist? You know why? Because men don't lie. <laughs> men don't dance. Lying's haram, brother. Yeah, yeah. All right. <laughs> Ramadan's coming up. Ramadan's coming up. Yeah, I, I wanted to. I wanted to talk about um, the Arab parent superstitions. Yeah. All right. Yeah. We have. I know there's a lot of you guys as well that can relate to this, right? So Arab parents, for some reason, they always bring you up with something that you'll never forget. Mm. And something that will make you always be like, shit, even when you're an adult, you're like, shit, that shouldn't be happening. One of the most, imp- one of the most fascinating ones, bro, every time there's a thong or there's like a, a, a like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. you know, like a shahaita on the yeah. floor, for some reason, Arab parents are always going crazy if it's on the other side, if it's the, the bottom side up. Yeah. It's like crazy. It's like, oh my God, flip it. <laughs> flip the shahito. Flip the shahito. Fucking flip it. <laughs> bro, my dad gets up out of his seat, does parkour, bro. Wahid Allah, I've never seen him run that fast to bro, flip that shahito. I broke my wrist and he didn't react that fast. Bro, <laughs> bro, I'm telling you, you will fucking, you will be dead right in front of him and they won't react as bad as flipping the shahito, bro. If the shahito... The shahito, which Guys, is a slipper. For all the non-Arabs, this is a big superstition. All the Arabs can agree. Bro, it's a slipper. If the slipper is on the, the, the bottom side up, if the slipper's on the bottom side up, Arab parents are going rage mode, bro. It's like you click it an alarm, down. it's an emergency. The reason why is because, I don't know. Some what is the reason? I don't even know the reason. Some, well, know, what's some the reason? cultural religious thing. If anyone knows thing. the reason, tell me. It's some cultural religious thing, which I still you don't You know what's understand. funny though? We always... Accept it, but we never ask why. Yeah, we just we oh, never ask oh, why. Fuck, fuck sorry. <laughs> well, hilla, hilla, flip it. And, and, and it actually happened to me two days ago. I'm like, it was like my little cousin was there and she flipped the shahito, <laughs> the the slipper on the, the bottom side up, and I'm like, shit, flip you it. You became dead. I became bad. <laughs> I became freaking. I became my Arab parents. I'm like, shit. Now I'm getting old. Now I looked at him like, what the fuck's wrong with you, bro? Like, bro, I felt like now I'm getting old. I'm like, shit. <laughs> I'm like, now I'm getting to these superstitions, bro. Oh, bro, man. there's heaps of these superstitions. There's even some that are like, don't walk under a sign because <laughs> it's bad luck. And you still, you're like, <laughs> once I did it like two weeks ago because I forgot. And I'm like, shit, that's it. I'm gone. Don't, I'm done. Don't I'm dead. Cut your nails outside or something. Or don't, oh, bro. Don't cut your nails in the dark. I don't know, no, 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 no. Not that. Don't cut your nails and leave any fucking clippings on the floor. Yeah. All right. My Arab oh, mum My Arab mum told me, don't cut your nails and if you leave any clippings, apparently it becomes haunted and it comes up and it haunts you in the middle of the night. Really? Why did mum say that? So we can be clean. Exactly. Because she had OCD. I don't think there's a reason behind it. There's so no it reason. It's so because we don't fucking leave any nail clippings. And there's on another the one, the one with when you eat fish, you can't eat milk or something. Or you can't drink like milk or you yeah. don't eat milk. Oh, but sorry. you can't. Fuck. Drink yeah, that's milk, another yeah. one, bro. That's another one, which is. I, look, I still don't do it because I still fucking get scared. I'm like, I don't want fucking, you know, I don't want diarrhea or some shit. You think it's like fucking? It's bad. If you bro. thought the coronavirus it's is bad. bad, this is fucking. If you bad. think coronavirus, bro, fucking don't eat fish and then drink milk. Anyways, guys, I just wanted to talk a bit about as well. Um, now that we're doing the podcast and stuff, I shouldn't have left this to the end. But obviously, you guys know we're Muslim and Ramadan's coming up next week. I think, yeah, mm-hmm. early next week. Yep. So it's a reason for us to. Look, we're not going to stop doing the podcast and stop doing skits. We're going to still do skits. We're going to still do the podcast, but we might slow down a little bit because I'm not, look, I'm not going to sit here and say, brother, that's it. I'm going to become religious for a month and that's it. And not be like those hypocrites that be religious for a month and then the rest of the year they're doing fucking everything. Yeah. <laughs> but look, Ramadan is more of a, for those of you that are non-Muslim, obviously, and are not familiar with Ramadan a lot, but Ramadan's obviously a time where we fast from sunrise to sunset. Um, we don't consume any uh, food and we don't drink anything and yes we don't drink water <laughs> we don't drink water 
Please. Not, not even water. Not even water. <laughs> yeah, we don't drink water. We don't have cigarettes. We don't smoke argili. We can't smoke anything. All right? And we do this from sunrise to sunset. Okay? And and we, we ca- and basically, I enjoy Ramadan. Like, I love the whole process of it, bro. I love the whole process of yeah, having food, of, of praying the Taraweeh and... And just, you know, it's a month of reflection, a month to sit back yeah. and reflect. It's on one the of the many beautiful parts of our religion, right? Oh, because mate. Ramadan is a very, very it teaches us beautiful like part of our patience religion. and virtue. 100%. And things like that. Very good qualities. And I'm telling you, I'm telling you. Any person can learn from it. Exactly. Yeah. And, and right now, there's a lot of people, like, right now, when I look at it, I'm like, how do, how do I, how can I do Ramadan? Because I sit there and I'm like, bro, it's midday and I'm like starving. If I don't eat, I'm going to die. But then for some reason, when Ramadan comes around, it just becomes different. It just becomes like you can eat all this uh, stuff. Here, here it's easy. You can like ha- yeah. handle the hunger yeah. and the starvation. Yeah. And you actually, I feel like in Ramadan, I, I'm more energetic. Mm. I don't know how it works, but I'm more energetic in Ramadan. I feel like, yeah. I feel like I'm more, um, uh, because I feel like this, this is this could be a, a one-sided opinion, but I feel like food somehow slows me down. Mm. There's a lot of people that say you, food it gives it you distracts energy. You a lot, it, but it, for 100%. me. Not only that, I feel like for food, for me, it's like if I have a big meal, mm. after that, I'm, I'm, I'm basically in a coma. Like, I yeah, can't walk. I gone. can't, I can't <laughs> even skis. talk. I'm yeah. gone skis. Yeah. And the, the thing about Ramadan is for that whole day, you're not eating, you're not drinking. So you're very like switched on because mm. your body start, goes into a state of um, ketosis or whatever it is. Mm. And I look, I'm not a freaking scientist, but yeah. it goes into a state of ketosis. So you start burning fat, you start burning all this stuff. And by the way, Ramadan has a lot of proven health benefits even with science and there's a lot of people that say you know fasting is so good for you because it gives your body a rest it like replenishes yeah your for the people liver, that don't know kidney and stuff like that it's you you start from sunrise or yeah. fajr um which is our prayer time mm. um you start from then and you break your fast um from sunset from sunset and sunset, then you pray maghrib, which is maghrib. And, um, yeah and yeah there's uh the, the, bro, it's it's an amazing month and and yeah like going back to what we we're saying we're going to still be doing this podcast we might do a uh, have a week off or a week break or something like that and then mm. do another week off on and stuff and i don't know about the guests we're still thinking about guests you know and stuff yeah. because it, it'll be a bit hard for the guests during ramadan and things like that but you know you know we have it so easy. it might be a bit of a slow month yeah. for for us but but you know what guys we're, we're still going to try and put as much content as we can maybe put a bit of stuff related to ramadan as well and um a, a few other stuff and don't worry bro we're not going to be like those guys that sit there and go you know, like, <laughs> bro, the hypocrites, they're like, look, look, babe, I'm telling ya, straight out, we need to take a break, all right? Listen, we're taking a break now because I feel like we're not working out. It's got nothing to do with the fact that Ramadan is next week, but straight out, I feel like we need some space, all right? <laughs> Brother, we need some space. Like, don't come near me in Ramadan. I, I mean, don't come near Brother. me for the next month. <laughs> look, we're taking a break. We're taking a break. There's guys out there that actually do that, yeah. bro. They take a break and then they have their haram relationship for about 11 months. Uh, take a break for that one month. Like, eh, I don't know, man. Look, I'm, I'm not one to judge. Well, no, good for you, but like, at the same I'm, time... I'm, I'm no one to judge. Mm. None of us are perfect. But yeah, Ramadan's a big month to sort of reflect and, and, and um, you know... Uh, the, by the way, in, in Ramadan, your deeds are uh, multiplied. So, you know, a good deed will be even more significant than doing it in, in, in ra- non-Ramadan days. Mm. So yeah, so Ramadan's a time for reflection and a time for obedience, and you know, and, and inshallah we're, we're going to try and do as much content as we can, and yeah, keep doing what you're doing, guys. And you know, do you have anything else? I want to I want to conclude um, our podcast on a little sports segment. So mm. yeah, I thought every podcast we should conclude it with a yeah, sports right. segment. Yeah, we'll and I want to talk about specifically Australian boxing, right? All right. I saw something recently which um, kind of made me, you know, sad, gets me emotional. Mm. Something that always makes me emotional in MMA, you know, UFC or whatever you call it. I call it MMA, UFC, yeah. Um, boxing and all these combat sports is when you see a guy that just can't retire. He's getting... Oh, I think I know who you're talking about. He's getting to that old age, but he's just it's hanging just like, on. retire already, bro. He's you're, hanging you're, on. You're killing yourself. Yeah, you're basically he's, killing he's yourself. just getting a battering every fight, getting knocked yeah. out. And, you know, it's sad. It's sad. It is sad to see. And... Um, you know, one of my idols, Anthony Mundine, uh, had Anthony a recent, Mundine, recent bro. He fight. Was a, he was a killer back in his recent day. Recent fight with Michael Zarafa, which is a uh, very that good That was boxer. sad, bro. That was but sad. I saw he, that. He copped a battering, man. He got knocked out. Like, And he admitted... Let me, let me pull up some, yeah, some photos. Yeah, and the, the fact with Anthony Mundine is he had that fight and he admitted after that, he's like, 
He's like, look, I'm, I'm just getting old. That's what it is. And I'm just retiring. And it's sad to see because you never want your idols and people like athletes, yeah. especially athletes, you don't want them to get old because you always want that perception of them being strong, being tough, being, uh, you know, fit, athletic. But let's face it, bro. Age is, age is just a, a, a part look, of life. It's look, just a part not, of life. He's not young at all. He's, he's about 45. Which he's is, 45, which is pretty old. You know what I mean? And, and, yeah. and it's past your peak, way past your peak. And it even happens with UFC fighters like... It does, it does. Or, uh, I don't know at the top of my head. I don't know yeah. why I can't think of any. But there now, is but a yeah. few, obviously. That, there's heaps. Yeah. There's heaps. So, so it's just, um, yeah, it's very sad to see like Michael... Uh, sorry, what was I saying, Michael? Anthony Mundine, brother, if you're watching this, just retire, bro. And I, and I, and I know for a fact you watch this because... A little bit now, Jackie. Wait, did he? Maybe, maybe he did retire after that. Have, is there any I think news he probably he has. He must have. Search it up. He must have retired, but but the thing is, yeah. So like, if you get to a certain age, I feel like they just try and relive. Oh, he he retired. Okay, he officially oh. retired. Great. From bo- uh, thank yeah. God for that. The Guardian. Okay, uh, an article from the Guardian says Anthony Mundine retires from boxing and apologizes for infamous. Yeah, time. look, look. I, I feel like there means, should be yeah, a time. Retired. Yeah, there should be a time where you you honestly like you got to reconsider, reconsider your life, reconsider. There's a lot of choices. Yeah. And let's face it, bro. We're all gonna get old. And I feel like a lot of these athletes, what they think is they think that they can relive their glory days. Mm. They don't. They don't believe that they're getting and old. We, they're in denial. They're in denial. Yeah. And we don't know because we're not in their position. You we're know? not. We'd never know. And that's something they l- probably love. They love doing it, but they just they can't know nothing let it better. Go. They can't that's let it go. That's the sad part. They probably know yeah. nothing better. All he knows is boxing. He's trying to reform now. He's probably trying to become something normal, live a normal life. But it's hard because yeah. all he knows is literally getting punched in the head. He might have enjoyed that. Yeah. You never know. He looked but like he got knocked out in the first round, but he might have enjoyed it. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's it's pretty sad. You and can't um, blame the guy. I'm happy he retired, to be honest. Um, and I think it's a good thing. Yeah, it's yeah. a good thing right now. It's yeah, a bit late, but you know what? It's it's not too late, so that's good. And we got Tim Zhu, which is uh, his upcoming. He's coming up. Tim's, Tim, coming Zhu, up, you know. Tim Zhu has a big future. I feel like the problem with Tim Zhu is though, he's sticking to Australia. Mm. He needs to go move to fucking America and go fight with the big dogs over there, bro. Go, come on, man. What, what division? Take your next step. Is he in the same division as Canelo? Am I right? Hello, we're not saying Canelo straight away. I don't away. know if he's in. Th- I don't know, but is he? Uh, Look, we're not. We're not jumping. We're not know, jumping to Canelo, it. but he's yeah. super Walter, which is I don't know who well, is. Right, but yeah. yeah, he should move on to bigger he and better should, things. Yeah, no, nah, he should. Yeah, you know, his dad Costa Zoo uh, Costa moved on Zoo to bigger and better things. Very big name. Um, he's eighteen and zero right now. He's um. Yeah, he beat Dennis Hogan, uh, <coughs> take care of him, which is like, which is good. Yeah. And I hope to see him, you know, move on to bigger and better things. Yeah, no, I, um, I, I agree. I agree. Uh, there's a lot of people that are up and coming and, and I feel like there's, there's, good, there's room, there's a lot of room for Aussie sport and I feel mm. like oof, it's coming up. It's coming right. up. Is it a good time to wrap up? I think it's a good time to wrap up, guys. This was a bit of a long one, I think, man. Fuck, we went a bit of overtime, well, but no, anyway. Ones, but yeah, yeah. But I hope you guys enjoyed it. Look, I know there was no guest today. Sorry about that. And as I said, Ramadan's coming up. We might slow down a bit, but that's not gonna fucking stop us. Plus, guys, don't forget about the merch. Um, go follow me on Instagram if you're not following me. Follow Moses the Lebby Clips. We've plugged everything in the bio. Give us a yep. follow. Subscribe if you're not subscribed. Like, share, comment, whatever. All that shit. Love you guys. Fucking love the support. It's only up from here, inshallah, and we're just gonna keep doing what we're doing. And um, yeah, the I'm pretty, I'm pretty, I'm pretty excited for this merch. I'm not gonna lie. Same. Fuck, uh, I can't wait to show you the concepts. Fuck, it's hard to believe we have. Our, we're gonna have. Our it's own gonna merch. be weird. But yeah. imagine wearing your <laughs> merch. It's gonna be. But weird. yeah, uh, follow me on Instagram if you want to see that content. If you want to see the merch, and if you want to see, you know, basically my daily life. I don't think anyone wants to see that. But anyway. Fucking, it was a it was a pleasure today, man. It was a good Getting one. Pretty tired. I might just yeah. go to sleep straight <laughs> after this, bro. <laughs> I got work tomorrow, so <laughs> yeah, I might hell. sleep as well. But yeah, yeah. Thanks, All right. guys. Take it easy, guys. Bye Love bye. you. Bye.